last Cooking Mama, I said that the next Cooking Mama, we would catch up with Dave's cooking show. And it is true that we actually need to catch up on uh, on on Dave's cooking show because we haven't watched Dave's cooking show in forever now for those of you who are new to cooking mama Which I imagine is probably a number of you. This is the show where we go and we usually check out people's atrocious cooking uh, bad cooking but not intentionally bad cooking see I fucking hate it when people do fake bad cooking videos, okay? I need the real fails. I, I, it means nothing to me if somebody just puts a bunch of gross stuff together and goes, ew, yucky. But we found a few channels that are so self-confident in their horrible cooking skills uh, that they are basically a forever content mine. And it's always important that we keep up with those on their cooking journeys in the hopes that someday they maybe do make something yummy. So, uh, I have a gift for you today, which is, uh, as you can see, it's been a very long time since we've caught up with Dave's cooking show. But Dave has been doing a lot of cooking. Like, damn, it's been months. This was the last one that we watched. We haven't watched a Dave's cooking in months. So there's tons that we can watch, but specifically, I want to check out some of his more adventurous ones, okay? Because, uh, you know, Dave tends to do a lot of cheeseburgers. Dave tends to do a lot of uh, drinks that are mixed with soda. He tends to do a lot of, like, grilled cheeses. And he does a lot of pasta. But once in a great while, Dave will cook us something adventurous. Like, for example, one of my favorite dishes, chile rellenos. Okay, which I fucking love chile rellenos. They are so fucking good. So without any further ado, let's check it out. Let's see what he does. Let's see how he can manage the chile rellenos. Okie dokie. On Dave's cooking show today, we're going to make some chile rellenos. As you can see, I've got... On Dave's cooking show today, we're gonna make some chili renalos, as you can see. On Dave's cooking show today, we're gonna make some chili renalos, as you can see. I've got got my poblano peppers, blistering over an open flame. That's a real flame. That's proper cooking. You don't cook with. Fucking magnetic, sir. <laughs> he's he he's see he's culture warring. He's culture warring. Get it? It's gas. It's real. It's not soy. He's not soy, guys. He's a gasser. He's a real gasser. Electronics or any of that bullshit. Fire. So after these have sufficiently blackened, put them in a bowl, cover with uh, clear wrap. And uh, you want to sweat them for about 10 minutes. And now we're going to move on to um, making the, I guess, batter, for lack of a better term. Because, um, yeah, it took, me, it took me three attempts. The first attempt, everything was great, but I couldn't find my candy thermometer. So the um, oil was way too hot. And the second... I forgot to add the goddamn egg yolks, so the batter didn't work. All right, so what you want to do is you want to separate the yolks from two eggs, two large eggs to be specific. Okay, then you want to turn this on, turn your whisk attachment on your mixer, and then you want to beat the shit out of this until you get basically some stiff, white, foamy. I just want to point out right here this guy's got a KitchenAid that has never been cleaned. Look at this joint here. Look at how much fucking gunk is crammed into here. There's fucking pasty goop still stuck up on here from the last time he was cooking. Of course, his counter is characteristically disgusting, but just look at all the brown crap that's formed all around his, his KitchenAid. Just, just disgusting. 
just disgusting. He peaks. Then, once you've gotten it like that, you want to add the yolks back in. Best you can. Reset it. And then you want to whisk the shit out of this till you get some stiff peaks forming. And believe it or not, we're getting nearly done with this. Okay, after you've uh, sweated your peppers, got all that blackened skin off, time to stuff it with cheese. And I decided to go with Oaxaca cheese. Okay. Apparently that's a all little right. bit more all traditional right. than like wow. queso or something like Damn, that. Damn, that is brave. I can't believe he's actually using like an actual Mexican cheese. Holy fucking shit. That, but there's nothing wrong with it, with queso. Then you just want to seal the pepper uh, with some toothpicks. And we're getting damn near ready to uh, put these in the oil. By the way, you should have some oil heating up to about 330 to no more than 350. So. All right, see ya. I will just also point out how fucking disgusting and dirty his goddamn countertop is. And... Some of this is from the peppers, but this, like, fucking yellow goop over here is not, and he just rolled his fucking peppers in that shit. The next step. Okie dokie. Then you want to take your pepper and make sure you stab yourself at least once with the toothpicks. And you want to coat the peppers in the batter. Then, you just want to lightly... Take these things and fry them up just a little bit, just till they're golden brown. It'll be a couple of minutes. Oh, also, if you're making multiples of them, allow the oil to reheat, because when you put, them in, put anything in oil, the temp does drop. Okay, mine are done. And uh, again, don't forget to take the toothpicks out. I did it right after I got done with this shot. And then you just want to sprinkle some queso fresco over the top of it, and that's it. That's at least my version of Chili Ranallos. Done. Pathetic. Sorry, that's that's pathetic. I mean, I, I I give him credit for filling it with a with a with like an actual Mexican cheese. But um but that looks pathetic. His cheese application is, I mean, look over here, guys. The fucking cheese flew off the plate. This is terrible plating. He forgot to take the toothpicks out. Looks like shit. It's not even fully battered. There are areas where the where it's very clear that the just no batter ended up on the pepper. I, I mean, points for trying something new. But this is just terrible. His oil was fucking cold. Yeah, it did look like that. I mean, he did mention that he had to do He had to make them like four times. Oh, also, it does if you're not, making... It doesn't look like his oil is the right temperature because this is not bubbling in the way that I would expect a fry to do. Multiples of them allow the oil to re... Danny says, I'll give him one compliment. At least he refilmed the recipe despite fucking up twice because in the past, he quite literally would just continue with it fully fucked up. That's true. Normally, he does not refilm. That is a, that is a point of credit to him. Because when you put, them in, put anything in oil, the temp does drop. Okay, mine are done. And uh, again, don't forget to take the toothpicks out. I did it right after I got done with this shot. And then you just want to sprinkle some queso fresco over the top of it. And that's it. That's at least my version of Chili Ranallos. Rellenos. Rellenos. And on a side note, I will say this dish was really, really delicious. Well, that's good at least, bro. All right. All right. Well, we saw that one. Let's do another one. Let's hit him with another one. Wait, by the way, do you guys want to see what like a proficient one is? In fact, let me show you what a, a proficient chile, chiles rellenos looks like, okay? Ready? Hey everyone, it's Kenji and we're gonna make some chile rellenos. We're gonna real quick watch an actual good video real quick. So, stuffed chilies. Um, so these are our chilies, I'm using um, pasillas. They're, these are poblanos, so when they're dried they're called pasillas. Some people call the fresh ones pasillas too. Um, but we're gonna start with some poblano chilies. 
By um, the way, Ken, this is uh, this is Kenji's cooking show. Kenji is a motherfucking god, okay? You want to know how to make actual good food? You want to be able to make actual good food at your house? Kenji's show is where it's fucking at, okay? No joke. Dude is a god, all right? No joke. You can also do this with like bell peppers or Anaheim's if you don't want them. You know, poblanos have a little bit of heat. Ana Anaheim's come in varying levels of heat. Um, so I've just got my broiler preheated. Um, there are many ways you can roast and peel chilies. Um, if I'm doing a bunch like this, you know, five or six at a time, I'll usually just broil them, which is an easy way to do it. Um, otherwise, you can do them directly on a gas burner. You can do them on a, on a comal, like just put this directly on your burner. Um, you can also do it on the grill outside. But the broiler works well for when you're doing a, a bunch like that. All right, so while those heat up, um, while those start to broil, I'm gonna make our sauce, which is a simple tomato-based. Yes! He's actually making a salsa to go with it. That's another thing. Did you notice that there was nothing but cheese involved in Dave's recipe? That's because Dave is the laziest person on the entire planet. Let's continue. Cooked salsa. Um, Roma tomatoes. So chili rellenos, um, this is a dish that we ate a lot when I was growing up. We made, um, we, we didn't, I don't know where we got, we would get fresh poblanos when I was a kid. Um, so what we would do is we would use the canned chilies, canned whole green chilies, um, and we would stuff those with jack cheese, batter them and fry them. I think my dad got the, the recipe out of um, Leon Romero's cookbook. He the, Leon, Leon Romero was the, um, the chef at Casa Romero in Boston, which is a um, Mexican restaurant. This is, you know, this is one of my favorite dishes of all times. Um, I always order it. I always associate it with, um, there's a style of Mexican restaurant. Well, it's like Calmex or Tex-Mex or sometimes Mex-Mex restaurants in the US um, that I always call hot plate restaurants because it's the type of places where when they, the server brings your food to the table. They say hot plate and they put it down in front of you and the plate is like scalding hot and it's always, you know, and, you, and it comes with rice and beans and maybe a little salad and then always a choice of, um, of something either, you know, whether it's an enchilada or um, tacos. This salsa that we're making, by the way, is also one that you can do for something like huevos rancheros. It's a very, just a very simple red tomato based salsa. Um, that is lightly cooked. I'm gonna throw a handful of cilantro sprigs in there. This jalapeno. I'm serving this, my mother-in-law's in town and she doesn't eat a lot of spicy food, so I'm actually going to use only half of this jalapeno and I'm gonna rinse out all of the seeds and ribs so that the sauce doesn't come out too spicy. You can adjust the heat level however you see fit. So you can use Thank you, a whole jalapeno with the ribs and the seeds. You could use a serrano, which would be even hotter. Um, or you could use you know no chili at all if you want something super mild. We get an onion. Probably put like Based. half of this onion in there. Can you can you tell how much more delicious this di this dish is going to be already? Making a fresh salsa, uh, like like to go with your dish just advances your dish by so much like this has some this has fucking substance to it take a quick look at how the chilies are doing all right so our goal with these chilies is that we want them to be charred and bubbly and brown all over and then we're going to flip them and do the other side as well okay so that is doggy. our goal doggy let's see how long it takes to get. It'll probably take like under the broiler like that it'll probably take about 10 minutes Bring them in. All super rough here. You don't really need to do much more than what I'm doing as far as um, slicing it up or anything. The blender's gonna do that work for us. All right, and it's just a couple cloves of garlic. It does look a bit like a Sharpay. What a cutie. So there are, um, of course, multiple ways to make chilarianos. Um This is one of the simplest. If you go to um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, um, De Mi Rancho a Tu Cocina, which is a um, Mexican cooking channel. It's a woman who uh, cooks stuff in her uh, old kitchen, um, real hardcore stuff like <laughs> live fires, a big comal, 
um, real just home style Mexican cooking. Um, I love that channel. They have a really, they have a few actually really good Chile Rellano um, videos. Um, and one of them they make is actually similar to this, which is how my family made it growing up. All right. <clears throat> the, uh, now we do eggs. So we're going to do three eggs here. Separate the whites and the yolks. This is how I like to separate my eggs from the yolks. Um, it's just a, I don't know, it came, became a habit when I was working in a restaurant and you had to separate a lot of eggs at a time. You just do it straight in your hand like that. I think it's the easiest way. You can also, of course, do the old, like, you know, passing it back and Ooh, forth. True, true. Killjoy says points off for picking, picking something up off the floor without washing his hands. Accurate. You caught Kenji slipping. True. That's a fair critique. Damn, Kenji. Wash your hands. Between the shells to get all the whites out. All right, there, there. Uh, at least, uh, yeah, all right, all right. Now okay. he's washing. Now we're going to beat these whites until they are stiff with an electric mixer. There are still a few things I prefer to do manually, but beating egg whites is not one of them. We're looking for like a real stiff meringue here. And this is what creates a kind of puffy, fried coating on these chilarianos. So when you beat eggs like this, essentially what's happening is that protein in the egg white is kind of cross-linking. Um, and meanwhile, you're incorporating air into here. So you're kind of stretching out you know, that protein matrix that's kind of within the, you know, within the water, watery bit of the egg white. Um, and as it stretches out, it becomes more and more viscous. You incorporate air in there, the proteins, the proteins tighten up on each other. And eventually what could happen is they over-tighten um, and they'll start actually squeezing moisture out again. So you don't want to get to that point. What you're looking for is this. Those are called stiff peaks, you know, where it looks kind of like shaving cream, where it can really just hold its own shape. If you go beyond this... I enjoy that he uses more technical terms. Well, that's because Kenji actually cares about teaching you how to cook things. If you follow Kenji's recipes, you will be able to make something delicious. It's basically how his show... His show is actually about teaching people how to cook things at home, unlike Dave's cooking show, which I don't even know what the point is besides, like, ritual humiliation. Um, you eventually start to break down... Um, yeah, the protein's over tighten and you'll start to moisture will start to weep out and then your whole thing will break on you. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of just a tablespoon or so of flour, pinch of salt. Let me check on my chilies down here. All right, looking good. Black and puffy all over. Now I'll flip them over. Damn. I wish we could, I wonder, hold on, can I pull up the, <laughs> do you guys remember, do you guys remember what Dave's looked like? Do, do you remember what Dave's peppers looked like? Let those oh. just keep going until that second side is done. Yeah, I know you're not happy. They, not looked, happy about they that. looked like, they genuinely looked diseased. Let me see if I can, here, hold on. Hold on, I'll bring them back up just so we can have a side by side real quick, hold on. Here we go. We're gonna bring. We're gonna show you these, and I'll, I'll show you. Hold on. Let me just bring this up. I'm gonna show you so we can remember this side by side. Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right. <laughs> Here's Dave's. Okay. There's Dave's. There's Dave's. All right. Dave's peppers versus Kenji's peppers. Here, we can go a little further back so we can see all four of the peppers. Okay, or there we go. All right, Dave's peppers, Kenji's peppers, Dave's peppers, Kenji's peppers. I think I'm gonna go with Kenji's peppers basically anytime, all right? Over. 
we'll go back to the point we were at now. Oh man. See the oven, okay, I hate this oven. It does this thing where it just automatically locks itself sometimes and it feels like it, so now I gotta wait for it to go through a lock cycle. Oh well, all right. While that's going through its dumb lock cycle, I'll add my egg yolks. I strongly do not recommend this oven. All right, now we're gonna beat those egg yolks in. We wanna be egg yolks and flour in. We wanna be pretty gentle here. We wanna just incorporate it, okay? We don't wanna beat it so much that the, um, the foam starts to break down. And that's about all we need, okay? It's actually funny, our oven sings too. I think we might have the same brand, but a different make. Our oven does those same little songs. So that is our Chilerano batter. All right, I am gonna um, come back when these chilies are done, okay? It's probably gonna take another 10 minutes to go, 10 minutes or so once I figure out how to restart this stupid oven. Okay, I'll come back when these are done and I will see you then. So I will see you in just about five minutes, six minutes, something, I don't know. These are done though. Um, I flipped them one more time just to make sure that all the edges are kind of puffing out and lightly charred. There we go. So that's what we're looking for, kind of soft all over. Oh, there's one little spot there that didn't that didn't go, but that's all right. What I'll do is I will hit that directly on the burner to finish that off. It does. It does sound like the. It sounds like the comm device in Death Stranding. It does actually. Oh my god. So Beautiful you could peppers. potentially do your ch Beautifully done peppers. These, so these peppers are gonna taste way better. They're gonna be way more tender and they're gonna be way more flavorful. They're gonna have that sort of smoky, uh, lightly chewy with a, uh, 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 an outer crispy layer. So much better. Chili's 100% this way, the way I'm throwing it right on the burner right now. You can start them from raw like that. And just do this charm all on every single side. I'm just gonna also, get those last couple. By the way, he's proving that you can do it Dave's way and not have it turn out so bad. Plus, I didn't that the uh, broiler missed. Another way you could do this is if you um, you start in the broiler and then if there's any spots that are missed, finish it off with a little blowtorch action. Yeah, blowtorches are common. Yeah. Okay, I think we're good there. We're pretty much good here. Don't worry about it getting black. That's okay. Actually, it'll add a little bit of nice smoky flavor to it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on the cutting board here. Now, some people like to put these in a plastic bag. Some people put them in a um, paper bag. The idea though, what, however you do it, is that you want to trap some steam in there and that's going to help the skins separate from the flesh, which is our goal here. Um, I do it a way, I do it this way because I think it's better because it doesn't waste a plastic bag or a paper bag. I'll show you. Uh, Jacob says, Dave didn't fuck it up by only doing it over the fire. He just didn't do it over the fire correctly. Yes, that's what I'm saying. He's Kenji is showing that you can actually just do it over a fire like this if you want to. But you just have to take a little more time and effort right. and not just be a lazy asshole. We just asshole. get our chilies here. Just pop a bowl over them. Like that. And that'll seal it. And um, we're going to let that sit for just about five minutes. And then we're going to keep going. So I will see you again in a few more minutes. All right, so... Chilies, ready to go. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel them. Right. Also, Dave didn't peel his I love either. This part of the process, it's always. Which is kind of weird. It's always so appealing. Remember that? Right. Like, so why didn't wait. the whole point is to take off the outer skin layer to leave the flesh, but Dave didn't actually peel it off. Which is fucking weird. He didn't even separate the skin. I didn't even notice that. I didn't notice that he skipped that step entirely because I was watching the other stuff he was doing. Some people do is they'll throw away um, their skins. I like to actually do this. 
Um, the one thing you don't want to do is peel these underwater because you will lose flavor. You want actually some of that, you know, that smoky flavor from the skins to end up on the flesh. Um, but instead of throwing out the skins, I put them into a separate bowl of water on the side. And that way you make a sort of charred chili skin tea. And I'm going to use that as the liquid base for my salsa. Ooh. So that we get some of the chili Ooh, flavor. Ooh, that's a, that's a good ass idea. That's fucking crazy smart. That's so smart. Built it right into the salsa. It also makes it so that these chili skins can be a little sort of slippery and s sticky, really hard to get off your fingers. Um, and so having that little bowl of water on the side that you can rinse your fingers off and actually really helps as well. Um, so you don't have to do like a super, super duper thorough job here. It's okay if like little bits of skin cling on like that. It's totally all right. But there you go, looking for basically that, okay? I'll repeat that with all of them. What you don't want to do is tear, kind of tear these chilies apart. We are going to cut them open and stuff them, but we want to do that in a sort of organized, controlled Yeah, manner. yeah. As Tarpalicia said, this is totally how the Tartarians would have made their salsa. Yeah, it's true. Advanced um, You can also, by the way, cook these chilies like this um, a day ahead. Let them steam on your countertop like this, then just shove them in a container, put them in your fridge. Them cool down overnight. Stuff them the next day when they're cold, cold, or peel or peel them and stuff them the next day when they're cold, um, and that'll save your fingertips if you if you uh, don't. You know, yeah, you here I'll send you little, the recipe. Here's the link for anybody who wants it. You can uh, chill the chill the chilies. It's nice because there's not a lot of knife skills involved in this. You know, so if you're a little bit slow at chopping, you don't have to worry about it. All right. So we got those here. Now we're gonna slit these chilies open like that. Okay, open them up. And then we're gonna very carefully get the seeds mostly out. Again, you don't have to worry if there's some seeds left in there. Not the end of the world. Okay, seeds and ribs. Oh, this guy already split open. So we'll go, if they accidentally split open like that, just go with uh, the natural split. You don't have to, you don't have to cut a, a brand new seam in them. So the green chilies tend to be a little bit firmer. Um, I actually bought these all when they were green and they've been sitting on my counter for a couple days. So some of them started to turn red. Um, I find that the green chilies actually keep their shape a little bit better. Just don't split open as much, um, but this will work with red or green. Incredible. All right, so now we're just gonna stuff these up with some cheese. I'm gonna put that all, all that right there. And we'll see what we're gonna do with that very shortly. That is so cool. Okay. That so, is such a cool touch. This is mozzarella cheese. You could use um, Oaxaca, you could use um, queso fresco, basically any, any kind of cheese you want. Jack is really good, pepper jack is good. Um, this is just uh, low moisture mozzarella. So a few pieces of cheese in there. All right, all right. Okay, just like that. When I was little, we used to do this with the canned chilies. Um, those chilies comes with their tops removed, so we would kind of shove the cheese in from the top. And that was always my job, shoving cheese into, shoving the cheese in the chilies. There's another very- uh, Lucas B20 says, did Dave take the seeds out? Dave did not take the skin off or the seeds out. He did not remove the seeds. He did not take the skin off. Famous, um, Mexican stuffed chili dish, um, chilies and nogada, which is, um, you know, one of the national dishes of Mexico, but it's chilies that are stuffed with a meat mixture and then cooked in a cashew sauce with pomegranate seeds. It is oh, delicious, so but a good. very, very, very different thing from this. These are the kind of chili rellenos you would want to put into like a taco, I mean, we're, we're going to eat them on their own, of course, but you can put these in a taco, you can put them in a torta, oh, you can stick them in a burrito. So good. They make really, really good Fuck, tacos. Now right? I want to now I wanna have a torta tomorrow. Maybe I'll get Mexican tomorrow. Right, we're going to kind of overstuff that last one. Is this Kenji? Yes, it is President Sunday. Is there room for this somewhere? You can fit in there. We can fit you in there. 
Yeah, Kenji's amazing. Thank I was pray I was singing Kenji's Now what praises. we're gonna do is we're gonna make our salsa. I'm gonna rinse my hands. We wanna have our salsa ready, simmering on the side before we fry our chilies. I don't think right, he said so bell peppers. Find my strainer I think he here. said um I think he said uh oh shit, what was the other pepper? He said uh poblanos or um ah, uh, why am I blanking on it? I don't remember what the other one. Uh, maybe he did say bell peppers. Anaheim's. Anaheim's. Yeah, Anaheim's. Which is a like a the, those are the those are these ones. Hold on, the Anaheim pepper looks like this. They're like these. They're like the iconic chili chili pepper. This was the one he said. Yep. Okay. And so basically, what we've done is we've made this kind of chili skin tea. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain that out oh, into that our salsa. So, so you could, so you know, a lot smart. of recipes call for just using water. Or sometimes oh. chicken stock for the step. You could also, you know, That's peel so your ch smart. chilies and chicken stock if you want double, you know, that chicken stock flavor plus the roasted chili flavor. But I find you get a lot more flavor when you do it this way. Pinch of salt. A little bit more water. Okay, and now we're just going to puree this. I'm sure a green chili could also work, uh, but poblanos are not super super spicy. If you get all the seeds out of a out of a poblano pepper, they're not going to be spicy basically at all. Poblano peppers are very very mild. Okay, little oil in our pan. So this is this thing where you kind of sear the salsa in order to really rapidly develop flavor. So we want hot oil. And we're gonna pour this in relatively quickly. If you pour it in slow, it's gonna sputter and spit. You're gonna get oil splashing all over you. If you pour it in quickly, it will immediately start to bu bubble and sputter and develop flavor, but you won't get nearly as many uh, of those little bits of flying stuff. All right, I think we're good. Ready? We're going to go on one, two, three. You can see it immediately sort of started to change color, wow. deepen in color. And it's also going to deepen in flavor. So we're going to simmer this. We'll let it reduce down a bit. This is more than what we need for this dish, so I'm going to actually probably turn this into huevos rancheros tomorrow morning. Got our oil going. Looks what like it God. might be a little bit too hot. Definitely don't want it to be smoking like that. It's probably in the 400s. Now, we'll let this come down a bit. We're looking for oil around 375, 350. So I'll just let that cool a little bit while we finish off the chilies. All right, so for this step, we got our flour. Okay, I'm going to put my chili in there. Coat it on all sides with flour like that. You don't want the flour going inside, so when you're when you're doing this step, make sure that um, if your chilies, you know, you saw what I just did. If your chilies like have a flap that tends to lay open, make sure you hold it closed while you get it into the flour, because otherwise that flour gets in there and it turns the whole thing kind of gummy. If you're really um, meticulous about this, you can stick toothpicks in there to keep them closed, but I find it's never really necessary. As long as you're kind of careful about how you lower them into the oil, which I'll show you. Amazing. Okay. All the chili's coated in flour. Let's double check that oil temperature. Okay, so our oil is down to 375-ish. That's where we want it, okay. Salsa's not quite ready, but that's all right. We're gonna work on some other stuff while that salsa finishes up. I'm gonna get my tray there. All right, so now my chilies 
into the batter, okay? Get a nice coating. And with making sure that the chili stays kind of closed, all right, we're gonna very gently lower it into that oil. I'm using right here rice bran oil. Um, you could use vegetable or uh, peanut yeah, or canola or whatever you want. You can um, actually as as it's, see uh, the, the temperature. The temperature there dropped a little bit too too low. Oof! Small mistakes. Let's see how they turn neutral out, flavor. You know, so no like olive oil, no like sesame oil, things like that. Walnut oil, argan oil, none of those. But any kind of neutral cooking oil. And the idea is that you want to lower these in gently. There it goes. So okay, that it's starting to sizzle the a little more. Air in the uh, batter starts to expand. Okay? And that causes them to float. If you drop them right in, they sink to the bottom, they hit the bottom of the pan. Uh, all kinds of bad stuff starts happening. These are chiles reros, President Sunday. Uh, an absolutely delicious dish. One of my favorite Mexican dishes. Uh, uh, anytime we go to a new Mexican place in the area, I will always order their chiles reros. Uh, reros, which uh, it's, it's amazing. Basically, uh, it is a chile, a stuffed chile uh, uh, that is rolled in a whipped egg uh like coating and a little bit of flour so you get this like uh like it's almost like an omelet it has like an omelet like texture and flavor uh with a chili uh totally packed with cheese on the inside it's amazing genuinely incredible if you see a little hole like that just plug it up with some batter i'm good they stick to the bottom of the pan the batter loses its um puffiness so you want to really lower them in gentle you can also do this, you don't, so I'm frying on a wok, which I think is the best uh, device, best um, implement for frying, but you can do this. Andrew Kowalski says, I had no idea that your cooking streams were this much fun. I need to go back and catch up. Right? Right? Cooking Mama streams are awesome. We have a great time every time we do Cooking Mama, whether we're watching terrible food or whether we're watching delicious food. I'm really happy that you all are enjoying this. This has been a fucking blast of a stream once we got through the Aiden Ross stuff. And by the way, for those of you who weren't convinced at the beginning of the stream that you would have fun with Conspiracy Mama and Cooking Mama, was I not correct? Did you not have an excellent stream? We did a solid little politics segment. We had an awesome review at the beginning. We had conspiracy and cooking. A proper variety show. A proper variety show. It's in like a, you know, like a chicken fryer, like a skillet. If you want, you could shallow fry them. They come out just fine. Um, they do end up getting, you know, like a spots where they touch the bottom are gonna be a little bit darker, um, but that's okay. I'm deep frying basically just because I had uh, I was frying chicken the other day, and I had all this ch this oil left over in the wok. So rather than bother straining it out and taking care of that, I was like, yeah, I might as well just fry up some chili rellenos. When your fingers are coated with batter like this, by the way, it protects it from the hot oil. So people are I know some people like freak out when they see fingers going near hot oil like that. But like you can take a finger of batter and just dip it in hot oil, and it's not really gonna harm you at all. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why you batter fried foods is because the batter um, is so insulative and it um, prevents the uh, food underneath from drying out. So that's why like beer battered fish, you have this nice puffy beer batter um, and fish is extremely delicate. You never, generally don't want to um, fry it at really high temperatures or cook it at really high temperatures and you know, frying is violent. But the batter, because it so, has so much air in it, it's a great insulator and it keeps your fish uh, from cooking too hot and too fast. In the same way, it'll keep your fingers from cooking too hot and too fast. So when you're frying foods, oops, this guy's probably gonna, we're gonna have a little blowout here, that's okay. When you're frying foods, you wanna bring your hand right down to the oil. Because the worst thing you can do is drop fried foods into the oil. Because that causes them to splash up. And that's how you end up with burns. True. All right, so those first ones are ready to flip, I'm sure. 
Oh my nice and god! Puffy and gold. Look at how beautiful this one looks by comparison to Dave's. Do you guys remember what Dave's looked like? Golden. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? And you see, I'm adjusting, I'm gonna adjust the uh, temperature. You want that oil to maintain a temperature of at least like 325 in the 350. Anywhere between like, yeah, 325 and 400 is good. We're at 390 right now, which is uh, on the top end of that spectrum of where we wanna be. Any higher than that, and what's gonna happen is your batter's gonna burn before yeah, you want that. it cooks through. You definitely don't want that to happen. Oh, that one flipped back over. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> this guy does not want to stay flipped over. Come on, there you go. There you go. Oh! I feel like doing this is sometimes like getting a dressing a toddler who doesn't want to be dressed. You, you, you take care of one thing and then you put one arm in and then the other arm comes right out. All right, our salsa is looking good. You see how deep in color that's gotten? Oh my god! Oh we can my reduce this god. down, but generally this dish you serve with a relatively sort of watery salsa like this, a very loose salsa. But you can, of course, cook it down as much as you want. Yum. Alright. I think those first ones are done. Ready to come out. And remember, remember, these are jam-packed with cheese. Oh, these are gonna be so good. Now, Chilorianos, you can also, I and mean, what I'm gonna actually end up doing, because this is the middle of the day right now, but we're not gonna have these till dinner. Um, I'm gonna have one right now for lunch, but the rest of them I'm gonna save for my family for dinner. Um, so Chilorianos, you can absolutely fry them ahead of time, let them sit at room temperature, and just finish them by simmering them in the sauce. This is not one of those dishes, you know, a lot of fried dishes, you're looking for like a really crispy fried texture. That's not what's going on here. Yes. Um, that uh, That's a really good point for him to bring up because uh, the thing about chilerenos is that they are not, they're not crispy. It's like more like an omelet texture. With chilerenos, the, the puffy coating um, actually ends up sort of getting soft and absorbing um, the salsa. So if you've ever had a dish, um, like if you're familiar with the Japanese dish of like um, tempura inside, on you know, on top of soba or on top of udon, where the tempura, um, or ochazuke, where where um, oh. where you put a broth on top of crispy fried tempura, um, the idea is that the fried puffy batter actually has a lot of air space in it, um, oh, and so it absorbs the sauce and it gets this really lovely um, soft texture that um, is also packed with flavor because the uh, puffy batter is able to absorb the, uh, the salsa. So, but I'm just gonna do one of these for lunch. So I'll take that first one we fried. I'm gonna put it right in the salsa here. Oh. Okay. And the rest of these I'm gonna set aside, just let them sit right where they are uh, until dinner time. So a couple hours and we'll eat them for dinner. Beautiful. Look at that. Now, now sort of for the people who are just coming in now, what this is, is again, this is basically, you can imagine this kind of like a, almost like an omelet. It's it's a very carefully whipped egg uh, and a pepper is rolled in flour and in the egg. And of course the pepper itself is stuffed with a lot of cheese. So when you cut into this, there's a whole bunch of melted cheese on the inside. You get the flavor of the salsa. You get the ch the chile itself, and you get the yummy egg. It is delicious. It's one of my favorite dishes in the entire world. Um, chile rellenos is is uh, a dish that every time I go to a New Mexican place, I get it every single time. It's absolutely incredible. It's so fucking good. Like, you know, fast lunch places or snack places in Mexico, you know, Mexico City, for instance, you'll find that they've, you know, they've pre-fried all of their chilies. 
in the morning and they have them sort of sitting in a glass display case and so when you order them they drop them into the simmering salsa and they finish them like that incredible for dinner tonight we'll have this with some salad rice and beans but for now i'm just going to have it as is look at that oh puppy Oh, let's see the cheese. Ooh, let's see the cheese. Oh, the cheese. Oh, look at it, it's so perfect. Oh my yeah. God, it's so, so can perfect. Can you imagine how good this would be inside a taco or a sandwich? All that oozy, melty cheese. Oh, so good. So fucking good. <laughs> Love it. You wanna have a few tortillas on the side when you're eating this? Okay, okay, hold on guys, it's time for the comparison. All right, so here's, there is Kenji's, okay? And now we're gonna take a look at Dave's, all right? There's Kenji's, you guys ready to see Dave's? Exhibit A, exhibit B. I so know, here's, I will say this dish was really, really- There's Dave's. Let's just remember, there's Dave's and there's Kenji's. Dave, Kenji, Dave, Kenji. Yeah. All right, folks, oh, I gotta go feed my dogs. They can't eat this, but I'm gonna go give them a, that leftover cheese. Beautiful. Hmm. God, that looks so goddamn good. Can't stop, can't stop. Here, Shabu, come on, come here. Sit, oh, good girl, come on. Oh my God. Yay, puppies get a little bit of cheese. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals. These are Chilerianos and uh- yeah! Trans-supportive and trans-inclusive Kenji! Woo! Yeah! I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Woo! God, I love Kenji. Kenji is so good! Alright, but guess what, everybody? Now that we've seen the heavenly blessings of Kenji, Oh, by the way, if you want this video or if you want to check out Kenji's channel, I'm going to link it in the YouTube chat and in the and in the uh, the website chat. So go ahead if you guys want to follow this recipe yourself to be able to make it. Uh, Kenji's show is unironically, it's designed to be able to teach you to be able to cook the things that he cooks. Uh, it's not like one of those fucking fake ass shitty shows. He actually teaches you how to make this stuff with a real level of skill and an attention of detail that you don't really see online very often. So go check out Kenji's channel. Obviously, he has 1.35 million, 1.35 million subscribers, so he doesn't need any help from us. But in case you all want it for your own personal gratification, I watch a lot of Kenji's show. It's really fantastic. Um,